would, uh, which would coordinate activities um, both for uh, the proposed common disease variant discovery and uh, some for the Centers for Mendelian Genomics. Um, so there are really two aspects to this. There's, there's um, the more mundane aspects, um, which are mundane but absolutely critical. Um, together with NHGRI staff, um, progress and cost tracking through multiple projects, um, tracking and scheduling calls, meetings, posting minutes, et cetera, community workshops and consultations for choosing new projects, um, for coordination with an ingoing project, um, for outreach. Um, NHGRI program staff, why? NHGRI program staff currently does this for the existing programs, but uh, with the growth of uh, and the changes to the program, um, we expect we will need more. The more interesting purpose for a coordinating center um, is analysis. And we can foresee some analysis tasks, although not all. Um, we are keeping in mind that, um, that there are analyses that will be done, can be done both for individual programs and across CMG and CDVD. Um, so some are straightforward, uh, some quality assessment, reconciliation or helping to reconcile variant calls done by multiple groups, um, outreach including coordinating analyses uh, between the program um, and potential collaborators is a possible role. Um, with uh, the Common Disease Variant Discovery Program, assessing when a project is complete or comprehensive, especially when such projects are going to be spread out amongst uh, multiple production groups. I think that's going to be, um, I think that's going to be a, a interesting and um, take some time and effort. Um, to start to examine, another task is to start to examine what it will take to leverage program data into common controls. Um, this is kind of on a spectrum. I think that the first, that first thing is to take the, the data and will be to take the data and figure out whether it's feasible to use it this way. I think it's a slightly different conversation if that works out to think about developing it into a resource. But at least we can get through feasibility. Uh, that could be a role for a coordinating center. Um, and given the connection of these programs with others, um, the coordinating center might also have a role uh, coordinating activities that might arise across programs even outside of the genome, um, genome sequencing program. Um, and generally, we would expect uh, um, um, whoever uh, the coordinating center is or whatever, whatever that is to be an equal participant in the research network intellectually. Um, it is pointedly not a data coordinating center. That's another kind of coordinating center, but that's not a function envisaged here. Um, there are a number of challenges. Um, it's highly, highly dependent on getting the right people uh, because of the need for interaction and flexibility, um, broad expertise. Um, uh, it's always tricky to write a solicitation uh, because it has to, in this case, it's going to have to anticipate um, and um, anticipate initial projects and organization of projects. Um, and there is flexibility here to award this uh, later than the other, uh, than the other concepts, um, which could help with, uh, with that flexibility. Uh, for funding and mechanism, we propose one and a half million dollars a year for four years. Again, uh, um, cooperative agreement, one award, and we would propose that production center grantee institutions, so the concept one and concept two, successful awardees, as go through, would not be eligible for funding under this to keep it separate. And um, I'm going to I'm going to stop there um, for discussion. Open it up for discussion. Yeah, Jill. So uh, I'm concerned about this particular concept clearance because I think that you're you've merged two very distinct kinds of activities here. And even in the analysis part, there's kind of a merging of some things that are a little more administrative and things that are more analytic. And I, I would point out there really aren't at this stage of the game and probably moving a little bit forward as new sequencing platforms appear over the next three to four years. Analysis of this kind of data is not exactly straightforward. Um, and so I would 
like to urge that um, because of these things that and and also because the, there is this thought that the solicitation for these coordinating centers might go out after the one for the actual centers I I would uh, like to encourage the thought of, of really thinking more seriously about this coordinating center and think about maybe having centers one that's a more administrative function, one that might be a more data-focused function, um, to think about what that would mean in terms of what it would take to really support the analysis piece of it in a reasonable way, um, to and then to bring that concept back to council for reconsideration. I, I. I personally don't feel comfortable with the number of activities that are sort of moshed together um, in this particular concept. I think that's basically it. Thank you. My question is somewhat related. Um, given that you are proposing one award that would cover a wide, what seems to me a wide span of activities, is there one institution that you have in mind that you think would be competitive and you don't have to say which one it is but I'm just wondering you know in the lay in your sense of the lay of the land of who's doing who would be a, don't, do you, I, I'm, you guys are looking at me like giving me the plural. stare are they out there yeah so <laughs> I mean I, I can quickly ask that because I asked the same question and we just did internal staff brainstorming we know the community we know our grantees and to be honest with you we came up with a good half dozen names of people we could envision who we think would be quite competitive for this. Adam? Um, no. Eric? So Adam, I'm all in favor, of, obviously, of coordination and collaboration. I think it's even more important going forward than um, historically. But I, I am concerned, partly for the reasons that Jill mentioned, but partly for other reasons. I, I feel like Administratively, I, I'm sympathetic that the the staff and the program, by the way, need additional administrative help in, in helping coordinate the complexities of all of the investigators. And, I, and I'm, I'm semi-sympathetic for that, the f fulfilling that need. I'm very worried about the design and analysis component of this. And I, I feel like we're building and we've approved now a concept clearance for a flagship now we're separately competing for the rudder. And I, I think that's not the good way. You know how boat. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> He's looking at me like, <laughs> I, I, thought, I thought this close to um, Maryland, we, you know, the, the Chesapeake, we'd be okay with that analogy. But anyway, we're competing separately for the steering mechanism. And I think that's a dangerous concept. I think having the coordinating center separately competed independent of the Mendelian program and the common disease program, I, in my opinion, is not going to achieve the objectives you have in mind. I think actually it may achieve just the opposite. I, I, I want to, Howard, your hand popped up fast enough that I thought you were going to address what Eric said. But if not, I can, I, I do want to talk about it. So you'll notice one of the things that probably didn't come across in concept one together with concept three, at least with concept one together with concept three, is, is that in fact, the, and two, or concepts one and two are supposed to do these analyses. And, and, and concept three, the coordinate analysis part of the coordinating center is supposed to have enough to have a hand in without, without so, so they're, they're actually going to have to actually coordinate. So in deciding, in dis right, so, so that's, they, they may not be able to do all the analyses themselves. They'll be able to do some analyses, but more importantly, they're going to have to coordinate that activity amongst everybody in the research network. And that, that's the idea. And there should be funds, there should be enough funds to do the work uh, in a distributed way. I would, feel, I would feel much better if the document then was limited to administrative coordination. Because I think there's a, a danger of misinterpretation and 
sort of mission creep into the coordinating center, particularly in the topic of design, and which has enormous long standing implications downstream. Um, so I have Howard and Dan and Bob and Jim. So I'd like to echo what Eric uh, said. I, I, I also, I'm sympathetic to the need. I, I think there, there is a solution that has to be found around this. But I'm also worried about trying to structure this in advance of knowing what you actually need until you know which centers are in and what the, what the sources are going to be and what, what samples and everything. There could be a wide range of, of different questions around that. So I also think there's a big difference between the administrative role and a global analysis piece. And so I also agree that they should be separate from each other uh, and viewed as potentially different, um, completely different activities with different funding sources. So I'm, I'm sympathetic to the arguments that, that Howard and Eric have made that uh, you can't sort of coordinate until you know what you're coordinating. But uh, I don't think we've, I don't think concept one was a flagship. I think concept one was three flagships and a bunch of destroyers and PT boats around them. Those are the phenotypers. And so that, it's, it's a very different effort than the one that I think is in place right now. And I speak from now four hours worth of experience as a member of this body. Um, so, so it seems to me that going forward, there's going to be this focus on disease and collecting samples and where the samples came from. And, and that is going to, that's, that's a mission that has to be common across the, the sequencing sites. It can't be that each site has its own criteria for that or each site has its own way of managing that if the data sets are going to be, and this sort of creeps into the data coordinating center, but if there's going to be some way of, to drive big projects like that forward, I'm not sure e any of the individual uh, ships or destroyers or whatever has the capability, bandwidth, or interest. And so that's a mission that has to be separate. And, and this, this business of making sure that everybody's pointed in the same direction, collecting the data the same way, uh, that, it seems to me, is a, is a function that has, if, that has to fall to someone, and it's not going to fall to the centers that we just approved in concept one. Well, we have Bob, and then Jim, and then Eric. I just wanted to share a little bit about the experience that I've had so far with the um, newborn sc uh, sequencing project, where we don't have a data coordinating center. And uh, mo many of the projects are non-overlapping. They're not that complementary. But what really is complementary is the ELSI component. And many of the same issues and problems are arising in all four of the projects. And the, the model we've adopted is we, we benefit from having an administrative coordinator that's based in child health and in genome, and that's Tina Irv and Anastasia Wise. And we're very, very lucky to have those two people. And I know I'm saying this fully understanding that your program staff are ridiculously overstretched in terms of serving that role. Uh, but for the other sorts of coordination, the approach we've taken there is to have the, the, the PIs of those individual components of the four groups get together as a special group that has identified a program manager whose job it is, is just to help those four groups, ELSI components, work together and form a coordinating center uh, across the four. Uh, so it is embedded. They are embedded in the four projects. They understand the four projects very well, but they're charged with working together and coming up with common elements and common issues. And they have to, they, ha they are charged with that and they are responsible to the PIs of the four groups and also responsible to the program office, officers. And that might be an alternative approach to this. Jim. Yeah, I, I share the concerns about trying to load too much on this. And I, I do think that the administrative um, functions could be served really well by a coordinating center. but. I, I tend to agree that the analytic and design issues are probably too much and maybe premature. And also, uh, I worry a little about the amount of funding, which, which is probably s sufficient for an administrative kind of thing. But I really am concerned that if you add on those analytic and design 
uh, mandates, that, that it's probably too much, it's, it's probably maybe not the right way to do it, and it's underfunded, I would guess. Eric? I, I rarely disagree with Dan Roden, but I will today. <laughs> I, I think what he described would be, going back to your slide, Adam, would be premature consensus. I, I think this field, you know, is so new of looking at whole genome sequence with common diseases. I think having a multitude of approaches is, is going to be advantageous. I, I think the field is too young to have all of the ships sailing in the same direction. I think there's there's a room for a variety of approaches here. And I think if the job of the coordinating center is to have everybody going in the same direction, I think that we, we don't know yet what the proper um, study design is, is what the proper analytics Can, can I get be. clarity? Because I'm actually confused now, uh, and I want to get clarity. I, I, I was not under the impression that a co the coordinating center would make the design and decide how everybody's going to line up their ships. I thought once that was established, that their job was to try to make sure everybody was following that and help in any way to coordinate to make sure that the design is executed as opposed to designing the design. I, I would consider that an administrative coordinating center, then not. Okay, but, that's, but that's now the study, what, okay, but now, okay, all right, this is written. but now, okay, so that could be my, but now the study is going, and so I'm going to go, I'll just get this point in now, because I heard at the July workshop, uh, maybe a little bit of a criticism, or maybe a more optimistic, or the positive way to phrase it, I heard that there was a great opportunity to make sure that you had um, some group outside of these projects, common disease projects, rare disease projects, um, to do, to, both to bring a fresh look and fresh analytical thinking, but also to make sure that they did cross-project thinking, since it is gray, the distinction between rare disease and common disease, we're learning more and more that there's some common analyses that could be done between them. So, so the coordinating center wouldn't design, but couldn't the coordinating center administratively make sure things are going well, and at the same time, catalyze cross-project analyses? That's, is that, I and mean, that's what I thought I heard. Do we, does this concept, do, do we, do, do the, does count, do council members think that is a desirable element, or do you reject that as a desirable element? And did we just miss it on the concept? So I, I just want to hear the distinction, because I, so I can, anybody going to specifically I, yeah, answer I, that? I'm going to okay. respond to that. I okay. Think. I mean, look, I, I think this is the problem of merging the notion of project management and administration with analysis. And it, you know, I, I keep talking about the TCGA project. So in TCGA, there were numerous of these genome data analysis centers, right, who were doing different things and people had different approaches and so on and so forth. But the centers that were involved and the GDAC analysis groups that were involved got together and they made decisions about, you know, the different levels of data. Remember, there's level one, level two, level three, level four. They also did cross comparisons across the centers of the somatic variants that they found and, and, and each center validated the other centers. So there are projects of that sort that could be coordinated and managed. I think what's making us a little uneasy, and I don't want to take the words out of other people's mouths, is the notion that there would be reviews of the analyses done by analytic people in this coordinating center. And that is what is described in the concept clearance. And, and that is the thing that I think we are uncomfortable about. I do think that, look, all of these centers are going to have project managers. And if there's a project management coordinating center that's doing the, this, this cross-center coordination, they should, as Bob describes, work very closely with the project managers at each of the centers. But I think analysis is a completely different thing and probably is not adequately covered by what is described and, and proposed. I, I I, I'm not sure I still heard an answer. Maybe I want to hear the answer. Do, do council members think having um, some group, whether it's this one combined or a separate one, some activities outside of the Mendelian centers and the common disease centers doing cross-project analysis, is that a desirable thing that we should be doing or not? Doing cross, you know, being, being involved in the analysis but also taking advantage of, since they have, will have responsibilities on multiple programs, 
they'll have they'll be in a unique um, circumstance to do analyses that might go across our different so, programs. So I think I answered. I, I just told you my personal opinion. I can't yeah. speak for all right. the council, so I wanna... but I think those kinds of things can can happen within and across the centers, not necessarily requiring a completely separate center. I think if it's a decision that such a separate analysis center, which is different than the coordinating center, such an, an analysis center is required, then it needs a different kind of concept clearance. Okay. Than no, so the I, one understand that. I understand here. that. What I'm asking is beyond this council, because I mean, I want to understand I, coming I out of this. I think it can be done very okay. collegially and collaboratively okay. across the center, is the way it was done. For okay. The I, I mean, what I thought I heard at the workshop. But was I wasn't that, at the okay. workshop. So, so what I thought I, I heard at the workshop about what you heard is there. you have your large scale sequence right. analysis centers, you have your Mendelian centers, right. and they don't seem to talk. And that in the future, we need far more interaction between those activities because but, they're not. But that could be a requirement of the program and also this project management administrative center could ensure that those conversations happened. It's a question of whether it participates in the analysis, which is I think what you were just describing and well, which I think is what's making us a little bit less. Okay, we heard it was a missed opportunity. That's one of the reasons we react. So I think we have Lucilla and then Howard and Eric. Again. Well, I think the idea is good. The execution is very hard. And I think also when these projects go to review, you can't review a coordinating center separate from what the centers there are being funded because, and also in the FOA, it needs to be very explicit. Whoever is competing for a center needs to know that there will be this entity or there won't be this entity and they have to do the work themselves. And whoever is competing for the coordinating center needs to know what the exact activities are. Otherwise, you might end up with, with grantees that are completely out of sync in what they thought they proposed and what they are now being asked to do. So to answer your question, I think um, there was consensus or at least some uh, agreement that there were missed opportunities. I don't think this concept, as it's structured, is addressing that concern. So I think from the administrative side, that's different. Um, I can imagine um, a whole other program where people could come in and have multiple groups that are analyzing data. I think some of our great data analyzing groups would not be very good at running a coordinating center, but they would be fantastic if they could come in and do analysis across the board. So to me, they're completely different opportunities. But I would like to see something around the lines that allow some of these really talented groups to come in. And maybe you have a couple of these uh, that are coming in with ideas and, and analyzing data. So let me make sure I understand, Howard, what you were, would potentially propose as a modification is have a coordinating center that does purely administrative coordination and then have a separate program to be defined that would be possibly more than one group doing analyses of various flavors, including cross-program analyses. Okay? Um, so I have uh, Eric. No, not you. Okay, Dee Dee. What you just said sounds pretty good. <laughs> um, but I, because I feel like well, being on the advisory for the centers now, I mean, there's a ton of work that goes on that, that UNHGRI staff do and taking that and doing that across all these centers and then expanding that and actually administratively identifying uh, opportunities to leverage what all the different centers are doing. I can see that as being really valuable. And I think, well, it's been stated pretty clearly, I think what we're uncomfortable with and these things about being part of the design and, and all that, it seems like that was going a little bit too far for what this activity should do. But I do see a lot of value in it if it's framed properly, and I think how you just stated that may, may help that. Dan. I, I agree with the idea that at the, at the scope proposed, the idea of biting off a big analysis chunk is probably is really unrealistic. So it was three bachelors and two PhD level people. And, that, and that's, just, that's just not enough to sort of think about how to analyze a, a set of 100,000 whole genomes collected across God knows how many sites across the country and the world and analyzed at least three separate sites. That said, I mean, data sets that are that big 
uh, need somebody who's going to be in charge of them. And that's sort of what I had envisioned this coordinating center's primary function, to make sure that everybody's aligned in the sense of how those data are being collected and where they're being collected and, and, and you know, monthly posts of what the progress is in terms of, of getting the project done. That's, that's a, an important coordination function that if it's not done, the, the projects will really sort of suffer both in terms of how fast they get done and how well they get done. So I think I'm saying, I think I'm agreeing with Eric. So, say, uh, so I, I think that the, the way you structured it a few minutes ago, I'll just concur with other people and say that was, that was nice. Restructured or Howard. Um, you know, I, I think may, maybe there were missed opportunities, but I think one, one difference going forward is that, you know, at least the large centers are, have a much more tightly focused mission now. And if you just think about the projects that are being done, you have, you know, these, a handful of huge projects on, on, one, on one side. On the other side, you've got hundreds of very small projects. And it's, it's harder to see, I guess, what the synergies will be going forward in that sense, I guess. <laughs> Whenever I'm lost, I look to Rudy. <laughs> I think it's time to vote. <laughs> Was that anticipating the vote? So actually, before actually before we do this, could, and I don't know, maybe Jeff, if you have something you want to add, walk to a microphone. Let me understand this correctly. I mean, we're through two concept clearances that we've that we've now been approved. Those were the time sensitive ones from the point of view of sort of existing programs that at least in some form are going to move into the next phase. But this is brand new, of which there's much less time sensitivity in terms of meeting deadlines to get RFAs out and uh, applications into council. So having this, as opposed to spending a lot of council time now trying to re-engineer something and get something passed so we can move on, it's not a huge deal, Adam and or Jeff, to correct me if I'm wrong, it's not a huge deal if we take this advice, go back and bring some fresh new concept or concepts to February council. Is that a correct statement? I think that's, uh, a, I think I think that's not a correct statement and I'm particularly thinking okay. of Lucilla's uh, point that the, set, the, peop, the, the applicants to concepts one and two need to understand what they're going to be doing versus what some other coordinating centers are going to be doing, whether they're going to be doing only administrative or whether they're also going to be doing uh, uh, analysis tasks. So I, I don't understand how we can ha launch those other two RFAs without understanding how we're going. Adam may have a different uh, So I don't, uh, uh, well. But Adam just said um, about five to ten minutes ago that maybe this, the, the FOA for these, this coordinating center would go out much later anyway than. Uh, I understand, than but I hadn't thought so about confused. Lucilla's point. But Jeff, I don't think the issue here is, I think the issue here is simply splitting this one concept into two. We know what the list of activities are going to be, and that can all be described in the FOAs for the concepts one and two. So now it's just a matter of where these activities are going to reside. And the, and the applicants can be informed in the FOA of what they will be asked to do and what some other entity will be doing. Am I but, wrong? But Rudy, it, isn't it also about the number of them as I think it was Howard, I, I forget who suggested it, it was either Bob or Howard. Um, but when this, I'm, this I'm, possibility of more more than one small effort to do these cross-center analyses. Yeah, but wait a second. I'm just trying to understand something here. And this is now almost, this is, we're sort of all almost in an internal discussion, external discussion at the same time. Seems to me we are going to have a Mendelian program and we're going to have a common disease program. And we're going to attract outstanding investigators who are going to do it. And they are absolutely going to be involved in the analysis. I mean, they're not ceding all the analysis to some other group, no matter what we do. They're going to be heart and they're going to be just right in the middle of it, bringing some of the best minds to it, probably even bringing collaborators to it. All we now know is likely going to happen is I think I hear a sense of 
support for an administrative coordinating center, which will bring the deep, so we can at least tell them there will be an administrative, which a lot of the stuff is pretty obvious what that's going to be. We've been doing a lot of it up until now, or there's even been a CMG or a Centers for Mendelian Genomics Coordinating Center already. So I think we can pretty much say that there'll be one. And then I think we can say, in addition to the analysis you will be doing, there may be other groups we fund to do the analysis. And in considering our genomic data sharing attitude, that should be going on anyway, whether we fund it or not. So I don't know why it would in any way inhibit the applicants for either of these two programs to propose what they want to do analysis-wise, knowing they're going to be joined by other people um, along the way. And the details to be spelled out in a future uh, funding announcement. Adam. So, so I can even think of some um, advantages, especially if there's a multiple group model for analysis of having that delayed until there's a little bit more information and data, actual data available coming out of the first two. So I, I, I would, you know, I have a lot of thoughts not, not settling on any one particular thing, but I do think that there might be some advantages if there's going to be a separation too. Didi? Could emphasize more the cross-center yeah. analysis, and I think so which doesn't need to go into the center application. Correct. And I think what Adam just said is even maybe an advantage of delaying that a little bit as we see how things flesh out. So, Jeff, does that make you feel well, better? It, it makes me feel better if we are zeroing in on there will be likely two different FOAs coming out in the future, one for administrative, one for analysis. Scope of the analysis is not yet determined. I mean, one of the questions is to what extent, and this might be a detail that you can deal with in cooperative agreement language, to what extent will the centers, the, large, the production centers, also be involved in cross-project analyses, which was one of the discussions, one of the models discussed. Uh, so you may be able to finesse that, but it sounds to me as if there was still some range of, uh, of, of, of analysis tasks that the large centers may or may not have to do. Yeah. I, don't, I, I certainly don't think we want to hold back these two programs and from doing their own analysis. I think we should be adding on top of it. Lucilla, with that explanation, does that make you feel more comfortable? Yeah, I think what I was thinking is that the worst thing that can happen, you, you write something, you get it awarded, and then someone changes it, you know, pulls the rug underneath you and say, now someone else will do your analysis and will set up all your uh, collaborations and so on. So as long as it's specified up front, I, I think that's important. And so so I, I am comfortable with saying that there will be such entity that they will administratively coordinate and there will be uh, perhaps one or more uh, data analysis activities that the centers will have to cooperate with. Right. Howard. I, I do think it would be a, a lost opportunity at, at best and, and a disaster at worst to have this thing start in year two of the other events, though. I think, I think the coordinating center ideally starts when there's this changing of the guard or inflection point or whatever analogy you want to use. Because if, if um, all the centers get going with their next phase and a year into it, suddenly these yeah. new kids arrive and trying to, trying to pull things together. Let's, let's get yeah. clarity on that. If the concept for an administratively oriented coordinating center comes to February Council, how far behind will they be when that group gets funded from the renewed Centers for Medial and Genomics and the new common disease? Uh, essentially a council round. So there will be four months, be, I mean, what will happen is be four months behind. Do, we, do you think that's a serious problem or maybe that's not so serious? I, I don't know. I, I think part of it, it I, I think in some ways it's serious. It depends, depends on how much this is a really change from the current business. If, if, um, if it's the same old centers and nothing really changes except no, we don't the, the nameplate, then maybe it's not as big. But I, I still think. No, but they're going to be doing different things. And, yeah. and, and for, the, for those three centers or four centers or two centers to get together, sort of to create a mindset of what it's going to be like in the next five years, and then have a coordinating center suddenly sort of uh, inflicted on them four months later when they've yeah. already decided how everything's I mean, working. It's, it's setting it's up it's the, the coordinating center yeah. to fail. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if there is that concern, that even a four-month delay, Rudy, I mean, Sorry. Can we, can we try to verbally modify the current concept? I think we're hearing very strongly enthusiasm for administrative functions, take out of this concept the, the, um, any of the analytics, um, and, and therefore have counsel, if I'm getting the sense correct, approve the concept 
for an administratively oriented coordinating center which would keep it on the same timetable as the earlier two concepts that have been approved? Or is that too much modification of the document in real time? Um, seems like pretty severe modification of the document. Now, what we might be able to do is do this offline, rewrite something, distribute it to the council. Have an email vote? I think, I think, Sorry. I think there's been enough open discussion here that will satisfy the requirement that what you're voting on and approving has been debated by a public uh, uh, meeting. I, I think there's enough of that that's occurred here. I'm just uncomfortable that you're voting on something that you don't really have before you. Okay, so council, would you be, uh, we'll talk about the analytical stuff in a second, would you be comfortable with a quick turnaround revision to the concept clearance that would make it look all administrative and not delving into areas you're uncomfortable with? You would be sent by email in some short number of weeks and would hopefully we would have some, if we had to get on a conference call, we could do it. We maybe could do it by email, approve. And if that's then true, we can get the RFA synchronized with the other two concepts. Am I, I mean, I don't want to vote on it, but if I see enough nodding heads, so well, I don't want, we don't, we don't have to move. But yes, I'm seeing generally that would be okay. So administrative or both in no, two weeks? No, only administrative. Okay. Only administrative. And then it sounded like, okay, so if we're there, then that's great. We have a plan for the administrative component. For the analysis component, now I'll ask the same question as before. Is that okay if that lags behind four or more months of the other? Um, I, and I heard one argument already that maybe it's even better if it lags behind because you'll know more. I think Joe wants a five-year lag. Yeah, yeah, well, that's a different thing. But Actually, Howard, that's not fair, and it's not true. Four and a half. <laughs> I, I, won't, I won't say anything because this is open session. Um, no, but, but, but seriously, there won't be data for, those, for that analysis group or, you know, for that analysis center or centers. And, and I, I would urge you to think about the suggestion that was made in the other corner of the table about centers because that, that part of the TCG, I think, worked extraordinarily well. And then those centers actually got together and wrote papers together. They had cross analysis center working groups that also included the sequencing centers for the TCG. So I think that would be a great thing. Personally. Okay, Dan? One small point, or maybe not such a small point, I wonder if you want to lift the requirement that the, cent the major centers cannot then be part of a coordinate. The major centers should be allowed to compete for uh, the analytical centers. And I'm not sure you, you actually want analytical centers. I think back about the, on the, uh, the Emerge Network has all these, you know, separate working groups that, that, you know, are trans center and work together on problems of genomics, phenomics, analysis, what have you. And so that's a, that's a separate model and not something we have to actually decide. Today. Yeah, I mean, I think eligibility would be looked at again uh, with very different glasses because you have now put us in a position we'll look at all this with very different glasses. So we'll bring you back I, in February we will bring back either a concept or we'll bring you back an update of our thinking and if, we, if we're having trouble fleshing it out, we'll come back for feedback and since it, we'll decide whether yet another four month delay would be a big deal or not, so we can go a little slower on that. So I'm, I'm just trying to make eye contact with Adam and Jeff Schloss, make sure that staff's on board with this new plan. We'll make this work. Jay, did you want to? I'll say, I think one really nice thing about having analysis centers that are separate from production groups is that it just allows for engagement of a bigger fraction of our community and, and you know, there are great people in a lot of places more than just Well, we agree with that. I mean, again, when we were, I was asked the question before, did you envision the people that might do this? And admittedly, we went to some great analytical minds and figured they would figure out how to do the administrative side. So I, we know who some of those people might be and we're very enthusiastic about that. And maybe, you know, you use the word center. But having more than one would having, be good and maybe too, the right? Centers, maybe centers is the wrong word. I mean, maybe these are, you know, in, you know, small little groups or something. I mean, maybe center sounds much bigger than what this might look like, especially if we go to more than one, maybe we'll have a small grouping of them. So you've given us things to think about, but I think very productively, and I think we have a plan going forward. So with that in mind, do we still need to take a vote since we put a concept out? Okay, but I think we know how you're gonna vote. Um, I'm not quite sure whether I should ask for a motion to approve or disapprove, but let's go ahead and have some fun. Uh, can I get a motion to uh, approve the concept that was put before you? You're gonna get a chance to vote it down, so somebody say yes. A second, 
All in favor? All opposed? Keep your hands. One, two, three, four, five. Thank you. Any abstaining? Thank you very much. Thank you, Adam. Larry, are you ready? All right. Remember, we've all along we've had a fourth concept to uh, entertain, and uh, Larry is going to uh, present a concept on the Center for Inherited Disease Research. This is a contract um, solicitation. Go ahead, Larry. And after that, you'll hear from my brother um, on uh, genomics and society. <laughs> 